What's going on, y'all? It's your boy T-Mall Got Kicks, and we are back with another episode of Young OG. And I have one of my OGs, one of my close friends, one of my mentors, somebody I feel like he's a brother, and, you know, my boy, Teddy Rucks. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate What's going that. on, man? Uh, tell the cool, people man. a little bit about yourself. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, but... For the people that for, don't know. For the people that don't know, it's Teddy Rux, uh, VH1, uh, let me rephrase that. Teddy Rux from the number one VH, VH1 show, Black Ink Crew, from the Bronx. Um, that's really it. Yeah. That's, man, really, that's uh, really all I can say. So today, we kind of want to just dive in for the people that really don't follow you, that don't know that you're really into sneakers. Mm -hmm. like, you're really into fashion. You're really a part of the culture, you know, TV's mm -hmm. TV. A lot of people don't get to see that other side of right. Teddy Ruck. So we're going to dive into sneakers, fashion, mm -hmm. fitteds, the culture, how it was back then, how it is now. So let's get it. I'm ready. First thing let's talk about growing up. What was the sneaker that got you like kind of hooked on sneakers? Like I had to have it. And then I opened that door for you just wanting to buy sneakers. I could go all the way back to like second grade, bro. My first Jordan would be the infrared six. And you know, it's crazy. We always have conversations. Like for me, it's black cements, but one A, one B, like infrared six. Yeah. And we all, like we kind of connected because of the infrared six. Infrared six, exactly. So, that, that's like, crazy. You remember that that's conversation. That's crazy because <laughs> he didn't change his story from then. And when I do interviews, it'd be like, yo, what's your favorite shoe? And I always say black cement, but mm -hmm. it's one A, one B, because infrared six is just an amazing shoe. I mean, so, we could go back and forth about it. If you want to do design, if you want to do like Jordan himself, like yeah. I feel it's his first championship, yeah. defensive player of the year, MVP. Yeah. He did so much yeah. in that shoe, but that's another conversation. Yeah, like, but yeah, the, the, that's, that's what started it for me. But that was like second grade. So of course my mom's are still buying me kicks. I could say the shoe that really did it for me was the the second release of the retro five okay that's when i really started like buying my own shoes that might have been like i want to say grade. what 99 yeah that might have been like ninth grade for me. I, might, yeah. I might be telling my age right now but that might have been like ninth grade for <laughs> yeah, me. yeah so it's like at that point my mom's just like yo the shoes is 200 dollars. you playing ball <laughs> you on your own bro yeah so you gotta it's figure like, it out all right cool so growing up up until eighth grade i had every shoe that came out but i was hooping so i used to kill my kicks yeah and then like once i had to bomb myself and you know I, so I, I, our big brother that's Jim. my similar story as well where it's like it didn't matter what shoe it was if you went to the park and your boys was hooping like you hooped in it hooped like in it. then you had to kind of explain why and it's like mm -hmm. i'm not getting you no more shoes but they turn around and get you another pair of yeah. shoes and uh -huh. then it's like growing up me learning how to collect was me just separating. I this is what I'm playing basketball in, and this is what I'm not playing. Same and that's me, same. And story. I felt like it wasn't me. Like, yo, I want to collect these and hold on to them forever. Mm -mm. I just had to learn how to separate the two. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened with me. And then I was able to double up because I was able to get a job on 42nd Street at a little like I like when the people used to rent VH. Like like a blockbuster type job. Okay. Like I was working in there. So my mom's like, oh, you got a job. I'm going to help you now. So I was doubling up. So I was getting the joints to rock for my mom's. And I was getting my ball kicks on my own. Yeah, 100%, man. So with sneakers, like, do you feel like the culture is changing for the better or the worse right now? I think it depends on, like, wherever you started and, like, what your take on the sneaker culture is. Like, it's different for everybody. Like... You got on dunks right now. I'm a person. I said I don't really. I, I don't like wear dunks. dunks. Yeah. I don't wear dunks. Like I like them. They look good. I know the some pairs. I know what they are. But it's just like I don't wear them. You yeah. Saying? So it's like it depends on. What, and I just how, feel like what, that's the way we grew up coaching. as well. Though we grew up where it was like, where, in our areas in the Bronx, like people wasn't skateboarding. 
Right. Like the dunk was designed for people that skateboard yeah. and that was in that culture. Our culture was more and then we basketball. Also, we or, also come from a culture like kicks being 150, 160. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. even though you might have on the newest mic, phone pods or whatever, and you hooping, you still talking. I could curse on it? Yeah. All right, you still talking shit to your man. Like, oh, bum ass kicks, man. He's 180 and I'm hooping and I'm like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's always 100%. like the shit talking aspect. So. I used to always be like, it's those dunks, which is ninety dollars, just don't count. But now, ninety dollars is going for fifty k. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like I said. So it, it was on. just like, even with that, it was like for me, the phone posit. I said it in the last episode. The phone posit was one of those shoes that stood out to me because everybody didn't have phone posit money. Listen. <laughs> I tell you, I might have been eighth grade. The first Royal Blue phone pods that came out, I loved them. Everybody knows it's terrible. I'm like, nah, that shoe was crazy. Clear yeah. bottom, like I don't know what they different. got going on. It, it was, was just different. different. But, but that price, my mom was just like, too. that price is different. You, yeah. you're not getting those. Yeah, you're not yeah. getting those. So the but first phone I bought on my own was a Silver Tim Duncan. Love it, love it. That's love it. That, that's a shoe that, you know, if you knew, you knew, and. At that time, when it first came out, that was a two hundred, maybe two hundred dollar plus shoe. Yeah, definitely. And, I think it was like two oh seven. And I taxes. remember having the Tim Duncan's as a kid because that was the first phone posit that kind of like came out for kids. Kids, yep, but it wasn't the same know. material. It wasn't the same material. A lot it of people didn't even know that shoe came out. In a so I remember size. that even being back then. But I remember my brother having them, mm -hmm. Silver Dunk. Tim Duncan's and they had the blue hologram type Different of swoosh on the shoe, man. Yeah, Different so shoe. and then fast forward to that, the Duncan's came back out mm -hmm. and they did the white and black pair. White and black that's pair. probably besides the silver pair, that's probably my favorite Tim Duncan ever. The white every, and black every pair. Every rare shoe. Can't find every rare shoe. Can't, can't find, find them. Shoe. And that's one of the pairs I hope that they retro because Nike's supposed to bring back the Tim Duncans. I mean, it's just a matter of time. It's going to come back. Yeah, I need the it's white and black, back. though, because they gave us so many other colors that we didn't mm -hmm. want. We didn't that want the Royal. I'm pretty, I'm more than 100% sure that that shoe was on the way. Like for Nike to bring out the Duncan later this year or next year, whenever yeah. it release again, and them not to do the white colorway again, they tripping. Okay. They, we need those. So what, what fits you was wearing when that shoe came out? Because I know vividly what fits yeah. I was throwing on. I was wearing Parasuco jeans. <laughs> Parasu <laughs> but not the Parasucos with the lines. I had the Parasucos with the back pockets yeah. on the front. Yeah. Like those yeah. jerseys. Yo. Shit like that. So with that, I had the Charles Woodson Raiders jersey. White right. and black. Good setup. Good setup. Good setup. I had that. Mm -hmm. And then I remember the White Cement Threes was out around that time Crazy. too. Yep. So yep. it was just like. Damn, Big jersey, uh -huh. crazy looking. Look at pictures now. Like I was wearing a forty-two pant. How <laughs> forty-two? But you knew what it was. That was just the culture then. Yep. And this is why I preach where it's like a lot of people wasn't messing with Jordan ones because you wasn't wearing a size thirty-eight on 40, top of a Jordan on one. You'd be walking your jeans would be yeah. up under here. And I remember people used to. Put rubber bands mm -hmm. so it won't drag. Remember you put the, the thumbtack thumb 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 in the back of your thumb phone pockets. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it was just like, I'm younger, but I just remember that because I have older brothers and I was always accepted by the older people in my you, neighborhood. You, you, and you remember putting your pants in the socks so you yeah, don't down your sneaker? 100%. And then, <laughs> and then still roll it and it's like, just yeah. so it wouldn't drag. Mm -hmm. And you know, you used to hate when it snowed because they used to put the salt. Yes. When the salt Kill get on your jeans. That's back in the day when your clear bottom first wear, they turn in yellow. Yeah. So stuff like that was just like crazy. But now it's just everything is in your hand. Like you can just, if you miss a shoe, I'm going to StockX. I'm going to I'm going this. Like, but like then there's no story. You're not going to be able to tell a story. So mm -hmm. like, do you feel like the storytelling the sneaker game is like just it's, it's like i said disappearing how you look at the sneaker game some people it's a hustle it's money for them some people don't care about a shoe they might have some money so they got access to it i know i could pay 160 win it on the app and flip it for whatever that's the only thing they trying to do so like i said it is losing the story aspect of it like me we just had a story about phone pods you remember a fit that you had on like if a shoe come out that's retro or something og 
it tells a story. I remember the first time I saw where I was at, how I got it, if I didn't get it, if I cried about it, if I stood on the line. Like, so that's the culture I come from when it comes to sneakers. And like you said, that part of it is being lost. Yeah, and I felt like that just, you know, like created it, the love for sneakers. It used to be fun. Like, it was no release dates. Like you didn't you really can go know. to your mom, your local mom and pop store, get them a week early mm -hmm. for basically, if you had a relationship with them, box price of not $20 over. $20 over. It wasn't give me 500 over, yes. give me 300 yes. over. And it's been times where we spoke and you'd be like, yo, they got these hair and they want this. And I'm like, what? Nah, like That's wait, it. just wait. And there's been times you pulled you, the trigger and there's been times you, you... You calm me down a lot with that because I come from the, let me get it, let me get it, let me get yeah. it. I need to be first. I need to be early. Now, like you said, there's no reason to be first or early. Sneakers come out, three pairs might come out in a week. There's no way you're going to get to all your kicks. So you got time. Yeah. You got time. Well, like you said, you got StockX, you got the club, you got all these sneaker stores to where you don't have to rush and get it as to where before. You had to know and you had to be there for it. I'm happy you said Flight Club because Flight Club was just, I remember it was a place where- Consignment store. People was just consignment. They had mm -hmm. a few flight clubs, but I remember the first one that was about Pace University mm -hmm. by the Brooklyn Bridge. Was that Water Street, Water Place, yeah, something was, like that, yeah. somewhere around there, in that little so, cut block. Yeah, it was by Pace University. Uh, I used to take the six train all the way down there and just walk to it, but the prices wasn't crazy. But you know what I think it was with us with that store too? It was the first time you really got to see like OG Jordans and like shoes that you just don't go to Hunts Point or go right. to Flatbush Avenue. Right. You don't so see. It's like a kid walking in the toy store. Like you walk in, you just looking around like, oh, I remember those. I remember those. It was the first of its kind. Yeah. Like Flight Club was definitely, I feel like, one of the forefathers when it came Absolutely. to. Absolutely. The versatility, having consignment right. stores and having the versatility in their store because- I kinda hated Flight Club for a little while because it gave people a chance to catch up and say, yeah. I'm a sneaker head, or I'm in, I hate that term. Yeah. I'm like, I'm in the sneaker culture, I've been getting kicks. It's like, yeah, because if you have the money, then that doesn't mean you've been getting kicks. That right. means you got money now mm -hmm. and you can just buy whatever you mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, there's shoes that no matter how much money you have, can't obtain. if you can't find it in your size or you just can't find it at it's all, over. you can't buy it. It's over. And you yeah, know, you that's a lot of that old stuff. You got a lot of those, man. It's a lot of those. shoes, like older shoes, that's like that, though. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what, like, I seen you post, like, your 99, 2000 uh, Fire Red 5s. Yes. Like a lot of people don't have that shoe in the condition you have it in. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So like mm -hmm. something that, like that, that is kind of priceless because you said that's one of the shoes that got you into mm -hmm. like, like I like, actually like I don't I'm still not a sneaker collector. Like I just, you just love like kicks. Yeah. I just love kicks. Just like love even singers. back then it wasn't like, oh, let me get them, put them up or whatever. Like you said, it was just a separation of basketball. And I'ma rock these, and then after a while, it just started getting yeah. more yeah, and yeah. more yeah, and more. Because now it's like right, I'm separating these. Mm -hmm. Like basketball kicks, you kind of like once a shoe you break it in, it's kind of like you want to wear them until they like fall apart, until yeah. they fucked up, mm -hmm. and then you might try to go back if it was really that good. You'll go back and try to get that shoe over, maybe in a different color. Different color, yeah. But try like it. that's. That takes time to fuck up. Like you're not just running through basketball things every week. Mm -hmm. You're not killing so, the phone like, posit in a week. If right? a shoe is coming out every two weeks, you buy and you catching it pretty much. If you want to do the math, you might get two pairs of shoes every month, but you still on that one basketball one shoe. One basketball so, shoe. Yep. And then you, it might just be a shoe that you miss you went back, they still had it. Cause back then you can go into a store and they would still and have a shoe that you missed. Yep. Or they and have the, like you said, the little mom and pop store that nobody was really going in. So the shoe just been sitting there. Yeah. Cause that used to happen a lot. Like hunt 25th street, walk down, walk in the old store, catch Bo oh, Jackson's $25. Yeah. Like that. On the table. Yep. You go to Queens, mm -hmm. you make out the Coliseum mm -hmm. block. You'd be mm -hmm. like, yo. And that's what like, I feel like traveling in New York made it so versatile for us because you could go to any borough and it's different mm -hmm. every borough like sneaker stores included like fashion sneaker stores you go to jamaica Ave, 
They're going to have hella foams, hella Air Maxes that you don't see on Fordham that Road, see, yep. that you don't see on 125th Street. Mm-hmm. And then it's like you had little stores that was in Staten Island. Training like, camp. Yeah, so you got <laughs> stores where it's like, yo, and it's just, just a whole different culture because story. they have to go by what they consume as well. Mm-hmm. So when you really into it and you travel, and it's just like, you, damn, bro, they had these Air Max 95s that only came out overseas. Well, damn, they had these Air Forces. Like, like when finish line, you start get like exclusive Finish line colorways. exclusive, yep. And then the same thing with foot action, when they had the LS yep. with the Great Fives, yep. the Lightning Fours, Thunder Fours, mm-hmm. and they stuff like that. That was stores, only so. at foot action. Yeah. All right, so we definitely spoke a lot about sneakers. Let's talk about fashion. Let's get to it. Let's talk Let's about fashion. So how does Teddy Rucks pretty much describe his taste of fashion pretty uh, much what are you uh, looking for when you shop in is it one of them things where when you see it, you like it, you buy it or is it something like you're a fan of a brand i love like obviously i love vape vape always vape is, been one of my favorite joints but like you said vape before it wasn't as accessible as it is now yeah, it was, so where it, it becomes only the vape store a quote unquote Hype beast fit now is something I've been wearing for a very long yeah. time. So it's, I'm just but comfortable in it. Like, it this is more of a dress down for me. Like, people might seem like, oh, he fresh. And it's like, this is me just chilling. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can't yeah. do an interview with the homie team. But if I'm going to get dressed up or if I'm putting the fit together, I try to go for the, I don't want to look like everybody else. I don't want to look like everybody else. If I could add something to have you say, the fuck he got on, that's, I did that's, good. That's the conversation. <laughs> if but, you hate my that- fit, I did good. Because now it becomes a conversation. Now exactly. it becomes, yo, what is that? Instead of, oh, he just got that on. Mm-hmm. From a distance, mm-hmm. like you can just have that conversation. Like, oh, but now it's like, damn, what's those? Like a person might ask and that yeah. starts a conversation. Mm-hmm. And that's how like you, not to go back into the sneakers, but you know, sneaker culture before, walk down the block person, yo, those is crazy, whatever. It's but it happens thing. now, even when you back out something that you had for years, yeah. that's still clean. Mm-hmm. And, yo, those came back out? Mm-hmm. No, nah, these are nah, from... these are from back then. Yeah, and you just... Like, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I have a came... lot of stuff like that. Like, I like, like... Like, a lot of stuff my mother wasn't really jacking when I was young, buying it for me. I'm getting it now because I can. Like, Jeff Hamilton jackets. Yeah, amazing. Like, like those, that's, that's a different era where, you know... You're seeing Cam, you're seeing mm-hmm. Dipset, you're just seeing Fab, you're seeing people rapping about it and talking about it and sh- actually like wearing it. And it's just like, I remember Pelly's. Yes. Wazam's. Yes. Averex. Yes. So even yes. go before like Averex mm-hmm. jackets. And you and know. If you like go to certain cities and all that, some of them shit still. still like, yeah. People still wearing yeah, Wazam's, yeah, yeah, bro. 100%. Like 100%. I was somewhere and I'm in the club hosting a party. Everybody had Wazam's on. I said. <laughs> Oh shit. So do you think <laughs> other places are just behind or it's just like they never it didn't all right it didn't get diluted in that area. So like I right, we gonna okay. keep wearing with Zams because I remember Pele's was like like mm-hmm. scratch Pele's. I remember Mark Buchanan. Mark Buchanan, the butter was, sauce. Yeah, you feel me? Like that, before right? it was like when Big was talking about Mark Buchanan's and then it was like they didn't really brand Pele Pele. Right. But then Pele Pele, it was something that, okay, well, mm-hmm. we're yeah, going to brand became, this and push it. It just became the, like the it thing. To, not the it thing to do. It's just a part of fashion. Like if something comes out and like everybody wants it, but everybody can't get it, then that's the thing to have. Like, yeah. So that was kind of like with the Pele Pele jackets. You go back in the days to eight ball jackets. Like since then, it was just always been classic fit, butter soft leather. And that was it. So why do you think stuff, I want to say New York, cause I don't, I can't really speak on too many other cities. Why do you think stuff in New York, like the trends are like at an all time high and then it dies? Cause I feel like we, we get off of things faster, Pause. Like I feel like we're on something and then 
It's like it's I, because we have so much access to everything. Like let me say, we got a babe store, we got a preem store, we got well, we don't got Barney's no more, but used to go to Barney's to get all the design. And like so, we have access to everything, so we don't really like stick to something for too long. And then you know, New York, we set the trends, man. Like I've traveled a lot of places, and people dress like they want to be from like they're from New York. Yeah, like look at this, man. I'm pretty sure it's going crazy for you. I'm pretty sure you got a crazy fan base for your hats and it's not from New York. Yeah, it's, I was, it's a lot of people wanna, outside of New York. Yeah. So with the fitted game, because I know us being from the Bronx and just New York in general, fitted has always been a thing. It calmed down a little bit because even when you go to other cities, like they got lids and lids is selling their local team stuff and not mm -hmm. a variety like we have mom and pop hat stores where it's like no we're gonna order every team right like how do you think the fitted game has evolved from back then to now um like you said it died down for a little while and i think the reason it died down was maybe new era or whatever trying to cut costs and bringing out the black nasties man yeah <laughs> like yeah. once they brought out them black bottom hats and everything it just they didn't fit the same they didn't look the same so a lot of people like us new york City, we fell back off of them yeah but and people in like other cities like lids and stuff like that like they can't get a hat with a patch on the side because lids yeah. don't carry it yeah like we set the trends there's no Yankee hat with a black bottom or a black inside. That it's some gray bottoms that count. Yeah. Like even now, shout out to them. The pink, yeah. crazy, yeah, crazy. And like I, like I was very against when other color Yankee hats. Like I wear a navy blue Yankee Same. hat with whatever Same. color I got Same. on. I don't Same. care what I got on. Same. I'm wearing the Yankee hat. Same. So for them to make something like this and put a pink bottom on it, now I got a green Yankee yeah. with a pink bottom, and I feel comfortable with yeah. it. Like I wear this anywhere. Exactly, because it was just like when we was buying hats, we wasn't going, like we wasn't buying a red and white LA Dodgers hat. Like no. we wasn't crossing the colors with the teams it it. and stuff like that. It wasn't it? But then it was also stores like Pegasus. I forgot about Pegasus. Right? Yeah. That still had yeah. gray bottoms mm -hmm. where everybody else had black nasties. But that's this. But that's like the hunt for it was like mm -hmm. you had to know or your man had to put you on where, where to get them from yeah because it was like every store was just carrying black nasty mm -hmm. then you had a store like jollo's fashion that right, still that had is. the yeah. occasion of gray bottoms had once in the blue yeah once in the blue and but that's when Pegasus people like us to go like, buy them all like yo let me get every one you got exactly. in a three eight or a seven eight back then i think it was eights like yeah. <laughs> it didn't matter what back size your fit is eight right headband <laughs> Then the fitted, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was still loose. Like it was still crazy. But now, like, but I feel like back then, that time was just everything, dressing wise, was had to been big. Mm -hmm. like, that, had, that was it. Had you didn't be. even go in the dress room and try your clothes on. It was no, no, no. let me get a two X shirt, forty two jean, and a size eight hat. And it was going. so bad. Like I remember having to burn holes in my belt because. <laughs> For the extra notch, or Yo, you I had the belt that had the two holes, the middle yes. holes that was just half wild holes. Belt. Yeah, there's wild like, holes in it. Yeah, so it and just, that wouldn't be ripping because you pulling exactly. it like this all day. Like, so I remember like those times and like how it is now. It was like you get older, and it's like fashion changes. Mm -hmm. I feel like Ye was a big part of fashion changing and the slimmer route. Kid Cudi, mm -hmm. uh, Big Sean. When Sean signed uh, with Good Music, uh, Don C, I, think I feel like, like certain people was like, you know, I, we, cause Jay came in baggy, but he still had like a polo on, mm -hmm. so he was like one foot in, one foot out, cause the jeans was still baggy. But then, a photo that always stands out to me is when he went to Fashion Week, wore a suit with 2001 bread ones like that that kind of like that photo to me always kind of like stuck in my head from then that's it's just like what yo fashion is like i said that what the fuck like you know what i'm saying like i'm pretty sure when Ye wore the suit with the mics everybody was yeah like, people yo. was like huh like what like but why now would you jordan do that ones now? is doing a collab with dior with dior uh-huh and now the married. jordan one is like the stable i remember you couldn't even go into clubs with singers on. yep mm-hmm you couldn't even go into a club with sneakers but on. Now it's like with the resale aspect of sneakers, people feel like, yo, 
if you pay 160 and you know it's worth 1500 this is just as tough as that designer that that person is why I can't so do you think anymore. that's why a lot of yes. entertainers and rappers yeah, and all that gravitate to it because it's the price point. the price point because it's like Ed mags 25 30,000 right so my Ed Mag, uh, so pretty much it's like a pissing contest. Yeah. Like, yeah, you got these on, that's, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's exactly on it. a right. resale market, they ain't worth shit. Most of the time, like designers, like you got the occasional Balenciagas that, you mm-hmm. know, the price would be a little more resale wise, but then like if you like, wear it, then it's like, you barely could get retail. You can't get anything for it. <laughs> And but like sneakers, what I realized that, like, I was going Balenciaga crazy, and it was that everybody hated the big Balenciaga. I was like, you know what? Everybody hated it. I know how to get you fresh. You want to do it. I want to wear it and make people like go it. So it's like, exactly. So yeah. I'm wearing the big Balenciaga. Big Balen- I'm going stack here, stack here, stack here. And then I'm missing satin, bread. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Satin royal. And it's yeah. like, damn, I didn't spend 5000 on Balenciagas. I could have had both of those in my collection. Yeah. And here I am. Once they put the lights on the Balenciagas, it was a dub for me. And now I'm chasing satin, breads, and satin. It's like I could have been had them. So it's just like I said, I go for the what people really don't fuck with, but I know I could do something with it. Yeah, just to show the people like, uh, you don't fuck with that don't mean it it's can't be a, done. Exactly. Like, and another thing I like about with fashion now is like, you don't have to really have on the most expensive thing if you know how to put it together. 100%. If you know how to get fresh, you know how to put it together, you could spend $20 on an outfit, you could spend 20 k on an outfit, it's up to you. This is being creative. So how do you feel about people spending a lot of money on outfits, but don't put it together? Like, does that? That's the worst shit in the world. It's like you can't go in the store and say, okay, that mannequin got that on. Let me get that. It's not going to look the same on you. And a lot of these rappers, a lot of these entertainers, that's what they're doing. And to me, that's just not it. Like, look stupid. Yeah. Look stupid. I mean, like an expensive idiot. 100%. I <laughs> and mean, a lot of people don't is, get it. Yeah. And like you said, the bragging rights, like, oh, I got on a $20,000 outfit. You look stupid, bro. Like, yeah. But, but it's 20000 Like, and they might, but, okay, but it's 20000 Now you're a hater. So, like, you're more. <laughs> on you know the tv side and have you ever been offered to get like a stylist like has yes. somebody ever always always and like a lot of people always ask me how like, do you feel who's about your how do you feel about the stylist as like point of it like do you feel like i'm not against it i don't need one though Okay. You know I'm saying it's a waste of money to me. Instead of paying a stylist to go pick out my fit, I want to go pick out my fit. Like, luckily, I haven't gotten to the point to where I can't go shopping. Like, if I go shopping, it might be a little uncomfortable sometimes. People want to take pictures, whatever, Ted, 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 yeah. no problem. But I can still go outside and go get my clothes. So for a person that can't, that can go get their own clothes, but needs somebody so to pick like it out LeBron. for them. Like, LeBron <laughs> wouldn't be able to go outside yes he's shot. not going like, every time he walks in the store it would have to be shut down nobody would be able exactly. to come in and you know that like if, if i a ever lot get to attention. that point cool like i'm not against it but would I you have a I'll... say would you have would you want to have a say or would you trust pull 100 trust into that it person? would have to Depending be on... somebody who really knows me like i don't think i could just pick up somebody off the street and say oh that's my style it's like it would have to be a person that know ted style because like you could walk into any store see a fit and be like that's fire, but Ted won't wear that. He wouldn't wear it. Okay. So you would have, I think the person would have to know me. Okay. So it would have to be somebody that's really like studying exactly. how Ted, Ted dress. Because my thing is, I feel like even with styling and being a stylist, like if you're going to reach out to somebody, you, like, you have to do your research. You have mm-hmm. to do your homework. Exactly. Like you would have to look at, you know, okay. how that person dressed, yeah. what they wear, what they yeah, don't oh, wear. Well, what... he likes big. And that would show because you would have, even if it's not like a hundred photos of you and bait, but if you it's see it. five or six, like, oh, okay. And it's you different. Like he's, oh, he likes bait. Mm-hmm. Or he's certain pieces of bait he messes with. He might not mess with everything, but coming into the conversation, you'd be like, oh, right. well, I, so that's well, right. I see that you wear bait a lot. Or oh, I see you wear bait. Like, are that's you into- definitely an eye opener or an interest catcher. Like, okay. Like you paying attention. Paying attention. You're paying attention. Like, don't bring me say like I don't know it's difficult because like I said I be I don't have like just one set 
fashion. Like this is my th only thing I could really say. I feel like it's really my thing, and a lot of people kill me every time they see me in it. But I'm just comfortable. Is the button ups and the basketball shorts. Okay. Like that's totally going against like Everybody. how you got on a button up and a basketball sure. short. But I'm comfortable in it, and I know it look good. Everybody might say, "Oh, how you do that?" And you're not comfortable enough to do it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I come outside with the most weirdest shit on, and I'm comfortable. Like sneakers again, Jeremy Scott wings on the back. I remember that. I, remember I love that. them because it's like, yo, what the fuck you got on your feet? But you fresh, bro. Appreciate that. Yeah. 100%. So that's fashion to me, like knowing how to put things together. Like yeah, you don't have a lot to, of people don't like, know how to do that. Like, this I, is easy. I feel like, like all babe, Sean Weatherspoon sneaker. That's an yeah, easy yeah. layup but fit. But being like, able to put pieces together, right? That has, you know, that's not big, like like basketball shorts and a button up. Like that's a lot of people can't pull that off. Yeah, they wouldn't know how to pull it off. They would. It doesn't even register with them to even if they go and shop and like put that together. So I was like, you know what? I but here's that. the thing: it's like people thinking basketball shorts is not just like Olas. It'd probably be some Doncy basketball shorts, mm -hmm. or it's it'd not. probably be you know right. something that's. It's not gonna not, be a, it's not gonna yeah, be a swing gonna, man short. Yeah, it's like not you're not gonna, gonna have you're not a regular gonna have Nike a little five hundred dollar button up with some sixty dollar shorts. Right. It would exactly. have to like, it's, balance. Right. Because at the end of the style. day, like the Don C's designing them shorts kinda like on the high end uh, like a higher end than mm -hmm. just a normal Mitchell and Ness shorts. Right. Like there's details that's into it. Zipper but pockets. Another conversation we had. A lot of people was getting the dons mixed up with the sponsorship shorts. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, these are not yeah, the shorts yeah. y'all seeing on them little sponsorship pages and all yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah. like I said, but the thing is, you know, what's bad with the sponsorship stuff is that they use Don C's references. Like the people that's wearing Don C shorts. Like I, I seen, I see it often. They'll have the photo of LeBron with the Lakers shorts on. Yeah, but like to I promote their shit. It. I could catch it, like, cause yeah, I, I like Don C shorts. So I could see 100%. somebody walking down the block, and it's like, those ain't the Dons. Yeah, because but, the but some mesh, people really don't know. And like, some people may see me. I think me. some people just don't care to to know. People just don't care, like, cause at the end of the day, it's like a lot of people's doing certain things for certain people. Like a mm -hmm. lot of people do the most. If you're a male, you, a lot of people do a lot for females' attention. Absolutely. Absolutely. A female, if she's not really into it she's not gonna be able to even catch that. Mm -hmm. Like she's not gonna go, oh, you ain't got Dawn C shorts on. Mm -hmm. It looks exactly but like, the same. But it's certain things like females are into, like the Dawn C hats, I remember females was wearing it. So they would probably be able to detect that. Like the, the you got person. a fake Dawn on. Mm -hmm. Because like certain females is hip to game, but a lot aren't like it's in certain styles. But for the most part, you know, females, I think they run the fashion industry they run the fashion world when it comes to like knowing trends because a lot of these stylists is females like lebron sure. stylist is a female like a lot of even people look, females, i never even looked at it that way but now that you say that that is very true like man. a lot of stylists are females because they study that shit from head to toe to doing the research like mm -hmm. i mean not not I not, really not saying that, male styles don't but female, like females in general, are so very, you know, particular with everything. yeah, with like everything. They're gonna sit there and put fits together. Yeah, like, like they love the shop. And, and like even they, like, if it's that, you know, that ten twenty dollar dress from whatever, but it's like oh the sandals, the nails, mm -hmm. the, like everything mm -hmm. has to flow. Everything counts. Like your accessories, your wristbands, your yeah. jewelry, yeah. Your glasses, yeah. everything. Yeah, hundred percent. Because it's like. You could put on females a ten dollar dress, but have twenty thousand dollar bag and Rolex watch and like, know what I'm saying? And you're gonna look like nails a million done, bucks. hair done, and, and I'm it's not just like I'm not against it. Like yeah. I said, I love it. Like I wouldn't see that. But, oh, she but she got on a cheap dress. It's like nah, she know how to put fits together. Yeah, or exactly. Vice versa with a dude. Like know what I'm saying, this is an H and M T-shirt, bro. I love them. They fit just like the polos with no logo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Most people, oh, you got on a bait fit. You're not supposed to be like, no, this t shirt fit good. Yeah, like, you know so what I'm saying? Was, so. Yeah, because my thing is your preference, and that's what matters the most because you're not wearing something for the next person. You're exactly. wearing something for yourself. So, let's just, you know, 
double back. Let's talk about more about hats. And you know, would you think about doing a hat? I would love to do a like hat. Like a collab? I would hat? definitely love to do a hat. How would a Teddy Rucks hat look? Like how would that hat? Hmm. Look. I mean, I feel like it would be a Yankee. It has to be a Yankee. It would it be for a sure Yankee. has to be a Yankee, but it would just be something that, like, because you got you got a fan base. You have people that's mm -hmm. if you put shit on the stick, they're gonna support you because at the end of the day, you're dropping it. Right. But I wouldn't want to do it that way to just please everybody because of me having a fan base and me having X amount of followers and all that. It would definitely have to be something that I love. Something you would be comfortable wearing for yourself. Like what you're saying, with me doing a hat, it has to be something that I know I would wear. Of course, if I want to just do something real quick, make a play, make some fast money, it's like, okay, cool. But that dies your brand down it dies you down it makes people not really want to fuck just because they start to notice like oh he just got a quick bag or he's got a quick matter of fact i'm not supporting that if it's something that's true to you then everybody gonna fuck with it like i did a patrick ewan sneaker bro and sold facts. out facts sold facts. out bro so who besides you has the best sneaker collection on the show exclude you exclude c's i'm definitely black c's Killer C's. C's is tough. C's okay. Is tough, but I'm killing C's. So C, it'd be you, then C's? Yeah, absolutely. And then who's after that? That's into it. Nobody, really. Nobody? That's not really. Like. What about Walt, no? Nah, Walt's not really into kicks like that. Like, Walt, he's more like polo. Walt I loves remember, polo. I remember, but I feel like I remember seeing Puma. I was, on, just, on, on, on how, I was just on 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 how House like, of Hoops on One Twenty Fifth Street. Like when, that's because that used to be like the thing to do in Harlem. Like Puma, he got kicks, but he's not like us when it comes. He not Jay. He not. If he could get his hands on it, okay. he gonna get it. He's more of the dunks and like stuff like that. But yeah. as far as like full fledged sneaker culture, there's nobody else on Black Ink. Like I honestly feel like in the reality TV game, there's nobody that could fuck. Yeah, I was gonna ask kicks. on another show. Well. While and out, we was talking uh, conceited. Tough. Yeah, that's my guy. Conceited tough. Yeah, that's conceited, my but guy. I don't consider that like reality tough. Yeah, person. that's just. I'm talking more... about like the loving hip hops, black and crew stuff yeah. like that. There's only one person that's tough, and she's a female. Who's that? Ty. Oh yeah, Ty. she tough. She got kicks. But she's uh huh. She's a uh -huh. cheat code. It's it's a, yeah. I, like, but she went to Laney. High school, yeah. high school Jordan went to Chico. Like just in, but that's the you know, you know what? I yeah. take the crown of that. Nobody can fuck with me in reality television. My field, where a lot of people know me from, like I'm the toughest. Like, it's, and the crazy part is that doesn't even get highlighted on the show. Because there'd be so many times where it's like the camera doesn't even show the shit. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it'd be like, all right. And there'd be times where you're like, all right, we see the fit, but it's like, what is on his feet? What is on his feet? And like I said, that. When I the platform I'm on, they don't understand how the sneaker culture is, like how people used to go to the basement to see what Tigger had on and yeah, shit like that. Yeah, like 100%. they don't understand like so, that. So like for them, like they need to like follow the market. Like you show them what the last Paris dunk sold for, they'll be like, huh? What? No way. No bullshit, bro. <laughs> one person, one one lady, one other producers on the show. Every time I'm on that camera, I got something different on my feet. And so she, for like maybe she, four or five seasons she, straight. She's noticing. She noticed and Then she came to me. She's like, why do you spend so much money on sneakers? And it was just like, it's so many ways you could take this. Like, I'm just into sneakers, but people make a lot of money off sneakers. Like sneakers are investments. A lot of people don't realize 100%. that. So I'm breaking the whole sneaker coach now. Yeah. But it just shows like they don't really understand they it and they don't know what's going on. Yeah. People don't understand how big this sneaker culture is. Yeah, they have no idea. I and mean, I feel like the hat culture right now is just mm -hmm. going crazy. Like yeah. I seen people reselling my hats, which Congrats. is like. I see when you post like that. For and I was me, like, it's like, I, like, cause be, people thought I was going to be upset at it. No. I'm not upset at mm. it. Like, I know this is a part of the culture. So honestly, it's kind of like something that I was like, wow, like people was really getting my stuff and putting it on a platform to resell like it. I said, you can't deny it. People want it. Like, 
everybody might not have a reach to T-Mart to get your hat so forth. To be yeah, so it's always, I always get the, the, um, the talk like, yo, my man hit me for your hats. Mm -hmm. He wanted I to see you. How many hat. times I called you like, yeah. yo, and I tell you like, bro, yeah, it's a reputable person. Like, I'm not just going to put your hat on anybody 100%. because, like I said, I know that's not what your hats represent. Yeah, certain you know people saying? just, you know, like certain people should be in that hat. Right. And that's, you know, me making the connections. Mm -hmm. That's and how that's I felt. That's what create like, the market. That's what create the buzz. And that's what create the culture. And that's why your hats is on StockX reselling. Yeah, so it's you know just so, crazy. It's just like crazy. you know how I go with the whole resale culture. If it's reselling, it's a demand for it. It's a demand, so you can resell it. Yeah, mm hundred -hmm. percent, man. But I do want to tell you, thank you, man. Appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man. I know never too busy for you, brother. Nah, like, but I appreciate nah, I you appreciate even reaching you. out to me to do something like this. I respect the fact that. Yeah, I'm not reaching out to everybody. Exactly. I'm gonna be honest I know, with like you. I said, I'm gonna be I know honest you for with years. You. I know how you are. Yeah, man. So I'm not reaching out to everybody. If you were to reach out to me and ask me to do this, no problem, bro. No, I'd have stop whatever I was doing for this. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. You ready, bro? Yo. All right, y'all. That was another episode of Young OG. I need y'all to like, comment, and subscribe at Debate the Hype. It's your boy T Mark. I'm gonna see y'all at the next episode.